Welcome back to Compass to College. My name is Frost. My name is Manoff, and today we'll be discussing unit conversions as they appear in most high school physics courses as well as chemistry courses and the SAT. So we'll start off with a brief introduction. Why is unit conversion important? If you're taking the SAT, chemistry, or physics, you need to be familiar with and fluent in unit conversion. But each of these courses and exams don't typically directly ask unit conversion questions. The principle is one of the most commonly applied across the curriculums of all of the courses and exams mentioned above. Next, we'll be briefly going over some of the most important unit conversions you need to know for all these courses. So these are the most common metric prefixes. The ones you'll need to know for the SAT are typically kilo, centi, and milli. And so the important thing to know about the metric system is that they all revolve around powers of 10. So you should know which prefixes are associated with which powers of 10. So next we'll move on to discussing the customary system. Most common customary conversions on the SAT are gonna be miles, yards, feet, and inches. So try to be familiar with these uh, conversions. All right, so next we'll be doing some practice problems. All right, so we'll get started with this demo problem over here. We have 100 kilometers per hour, and that is supposed to be converted to meters per second. And so first, the dimension that you want to change is kilometers. So we need to change that to meters. And so the way to go about doing that is this is a technique that's often used in physics as well. What you'll do is you multiply and you put equivalent conversions on the other fraction. So in this case, uh, we want to get rid of kilometers, right? So we put one kilometer at the bottom and at the top, we put 1000 meters because one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. And so what this allows you to do is cross out the uh, unit of kilometers. So now that's, we've gotten rid of that. Now we just have 1000 meters over one. Anything over one is just equivalent to itself. So we can cross out the entire bottom. Um, and what this results in is 100 times 1000 meters per hour. So, what we've essentially done is just gotten rid of the dimension or the unit of kilometers. And so this is a way to conceptually understand whether to uh, multiply or divide. On the SAT and AP exam in general, I would recommend to remember, um, after you do the problems with this technique for a little bit, you'll start to remember, okay, uh, when I want to convert from kilometers to meters, I multiply. When I, when I want to go from meters to kilometers, I divide. And so um, we'll continue this conversion. We want meters per second in the end. We have meters at the top. We need to convert hours to seconds. So we multiply times hours at the bottom over here. So we put hours at the top, one hour, and we want seconds. So hours to seconds, you know, you have in one hour, you have 60 minutes. And in 60 minutes, you have 60 seconds. So 60 times 60 is 3,600 seconds in one hour and so the equivalent conversion can go at the bottom 3600 seconds and uh, we cross out the hours and what we what results is 100 times 1000 meters over 3600 and put s over here so your dimension or your units are meters per second and your number is 100 times 1000 over 3600 and so that's how you convert from uh, a complex unit like this kilometers per hour to meters per second a car can travel one mile in two minutes and 30 seconds at this rate how many miles could a car travel in two hours so we're going to begin by setting this up in a ratio and proportion format one mile over 2.5 minutes now the other side is going to have to correspond to the numerator and denominator in terms of units so we're looking for uh, how many miles the car could travel in two hours. So that's the unknown. So um, we're going to set it equal to X, the unknown. And on the bottom, uh, the denominator ha has to correspond with the other side's denominator in terms of units. So it it's now in two hours. Now we have to convert the hours to minutes. So two hours is 120 minutes. Now from here, we could simply cross multiply uh, and solve for x. So one times 120 is gonna be 120. 
uh, and that's going to be equal to 2.5 times x. Now we're just going to simply simplify and solve for x. This is going to be 48. All right, so in this problem, uh, it says a wall is 10 feet by 15 feet. If paint costs $10 per can and each can can cover 100 square inches, how much will it cost to cover the wall? So one fundamental mistake I see a lot of people making is they think, okay, so one foot equals 12 inches, right? So then one square foot is equal to 12 square inches, right? But that's wrong because uh, I'll demonstrate right here really quickly. If you do a one foot by one foot square, right? Your area over here is just one times one, which is one foot squared. However, if you go over here, we're going to do the exact same size of tiles. So this is going to be 12 inches instead, which is equivalent to one foot by 12 inches. And your answer is actually going to be 144 inches squared, not one. Uh, it's not equivalent. And so, uh, or 12. And so uh, as a result, th this mistake makes a lot of people get a lot of questions wrong in the SAT where you have square units involved. So that's something to just keep in mind when solving these types of problems. So now we'll go ahead and actually solve the problem. I always find it more useful to draw it out when I'm actually taking the exam. So if you have like a wall is 10 feet by 15 feet, just draw a quick square, just do 10 by 15. Make sure to put your units so you don't get confused. And uh, we see we see if paint costs ten dollars per can, each can cover hundred square inches. How much will it cost to cover the wall? So first thing is we want to figure out how many square inches uh, of wall we need to cover. And so essentially we have to con convert. Uh, in this case, it's one hundred fifty feet squared, which is ten times fifteen feet squared. Uh, we have to convert that into uh, however many inches squared. And so the way to do that is uh, we could either convert each of these dimensions or we could figure out what the conversion is from uh, feet squared to inches squared. And uh, as we found earlier, it was just um, one is the conversion squared. So typically feet to inches is one to 12. And if you square this conversion, you end up with uh, feet squared to inches squared of one to 144. So uh, that's one quick way of doing it. Uh, I'm just going to uh, convert each of these dimensions. As you go along in the SAT, uh, it's more about just figuring out what is most comfortable for you and what's easiest to understand and what you can do most fluently. Um, I'm just going to do this. So we end up with 120 inches. And uh, actually, we'll keep this in f the form of multiples so that we can quickly factor stuff out later. So 10 times 12 and 15 times 12 inches inches and so your area a a equals 10 times 12 times 15 times 12 inches squared so now if we go back we see here each can can cover 100 square inches and so now we want to figure out well how many cans um, is this so this is another form of unit conversion even though can does not seem like a normal unit uh, most units are like feet and inches, things like that. Can, in this case, is a unit because we want to convert inches squared to cans. So uh, the conversion, uh, we can use the same principles earlier uh, where we want to eliminate inches squared. So how many inches square, squared are in a can? We have 100 inches squared in a can. And so we have one can. So by doing this, we can convert inches squared into cans. So now uh, we can get rid of inches squared. And to keep everything simple, uh, I'm just going to start factoring things. So over here, uh, we have 10, uh, which is divided by 100, which can be rewritten as 1 over 10. So I'll get rid of the zeros. And 1 times anything, it's by itself. So we can just get rid of the 1. Um, now over here, we have 15 over divided by 10. 15 over 10 can be re-expressed as 3 over 2. So I'll do that really quickly. 3 over 2 and then again um, we have 12 over 2 which can be re-expressed as just 6 over 1 6 over 1 and the 1 uh, doesn't matter at the bottom anything divided by 1 again is just 1 so we'll just get rid of the entire bottom over here 
um, and we'll get rid of the one here and because again anything times one is itself uh, we've gotten rid of this unit already into squared and we don't need the multiplying sign anymore so now the answer not the answer but uh, the amount of cans we need is six times three times twelve cans so six six times three times twelve is eighteen times twelve uh, which is equal to two sixteen cans of paint needed to cover your entire wall and so um, now we need to express this in dollars because it says how much will it cost um, and so that's something in the SAT I'd recommend also underlining uh, important parts of the question uh, some people they'll try to trick you they might have an answer choice like two sixteen dollars and that might be like a or something and uh, as soon as you get to two sixteen you'll see two sixteen dollars you'll be like oh I've got it I'm done but that you're wrong because you actually have to figure out the real cost. So in this case, if paint is $10 per can, uh, if so it's $10 per can, you have 216 cans, so you multiply 216 by 10. Uh, we can use the same principle earlier as we learned earlier to justify. Um, I think we're familiar enough with that principle where I don't have to write the whole thing out again, but uh, it's just 216 times 10 uh, equals $2160. So $2,160. And that's going to be your answer for the cost to paint this entire wall. One liter is approximately 33.8 ounces. John has plastic cups that can each hold seven ounces of liquid. At most, how many of these plastic cups could a two liter bottle of juice fill? Essentially, what this question is asking is if we're to take a two liter uh, bottle of juice and pour it completely uh, and distribute it into these cups that could hold uh, a maximum of seven ounces. How many cups could be completely filled to the top? So we want to first out. We want to first start out by uh, establishing how many total ounces we have to distribute into the cups. So if one liter is thirty-three point eight ounces, we're looking for two liters. So we would simply multiply thirty-three point eight times two. It's going to be equal to 67.6. So now that we have the total number of ounces, we have to look for the um, number of cups that will be completely filled if each cup can hold seven ounces. So we would simply divide that this number that we have, 67.6 by 7 ounces, to get the amount of cups that will be filled. This will come out to 9.66. Now be careful here. A lot of the times on the SAT, they'll give you answer choice like 10. And a lot of students will round up, you know. But they're asking, at most, how many of these plastic cups could a two liter bottle of uh, juice fill? So fill completely. If we have nine and a half cups or nine cups and three quarters, that the last cup is not completely filled. We've only filled nine cups. So that is gonna be your final answer, nine. All right, so over here we have another problem. A wheel rotates at 3000 RPM. How many revolutions does it make in 30 seconds? So in this case, we have the units. Uh, RPM is stands for rotations per minute. So we have 3000 rotations per minute and we're trying to figure out how many uh, revolutions or rotations it makes in 30 seconds so we can take the approach we always take with these kind of problems where uh, we set it equal to another equivalent fraction where the units are the same at the top and bottom and um, so this is assuming that the wheel is rotating at constant speed um, and in this case, we have, we're trying to figure out how many revolutions. So we'll do X uh, rotations per, and this is 30 seconds. So uh, we have to ensure that, uh, in this case, we, we made sure that uh, the units at the top are the same. Now we have to make sure the units at the bottom are the same. So we have to convert seconds to minutes. And see, we know that there's 60 seconds in a minute, and there's 30 seconds over here. So 30 is half of 60, so that's half a minute. So that's uh, 0 0.5 minutes. And so we're trying to figure out, okay, so assuming it's at a constant speed, um, if it's rotating at 3,000 rotations per one minute, 
uh, how many rotations does it do for half a minute? And so uh, you can cross multiply to solve this. So we'll do 3000 times 0 0.5, uh, which is just 3000 divided by two, which is 1500 equals one times X is X. And that's your answer right there. 1500 uh, is the amount of rotations. Thank you for watching today's episode of Compass to College. If you'd like to see more about what we do at NUSA, you can visit us at nusa.org. If you'd like to see more about what we do at HBS, you can visit us at hbsglobal.org. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at mosif at nusa.org.